Hey, what's going on guys? So today I'm here with Chris and Amrit. These guys joined my coaching program. They're doing like 8K a month, four months ago. How much are you guys at now? Chris, you can let them know. When we joined about four months ago, as you said, we were at 8K and now we're at 29K a month and including one-off projects this month, we're gonna do between 34 to 35K. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. So for this whole video, I'm not gonna mention the niche that they're targeting because it is something we're trying to keep low key, but here's how it's gonna go. First things first, tell me, what were you guys doing before you joined the program? Like, to get to 8k and then sort of what were the main problems you guys were struggling with Amrit, you can let them know we were just doing cold outreach to pretty much everyone that we could outreach to and really we were just like upselling to those few clients that we had and then when we joined we started doing more 3100 techniques that allowed us to get to the right clients that we needed to yeah makes sense so then were you doing like copy paste cold dms before and then you switched to the more like high touch high value dream 100 approach we had a cold email funnel that we were running and we were sending like i think like 50 or 60 emails a day when we joined we completely like switched that up reduced the numbers but then just like put like five times six times more effort into each cold outreach that we were doing makes sense these clients you guys are closing how much are they paying like 3k a month 4k a month how much is it on average it's around three and a half k a month got you okay dope sounds good so you guys are two people right are both of you guys doing outreach and then like if yes how much time per day would you guys say you're spending like on doing outreach and overall marketing and sales calls yeah so we both do the the actual outreach in the sense of developing the DMs. I'm spending probably around three hours a day on that. Amrit was spending around three as we've scaled so quickly. Amrit's spending a little bit more time on delivery now, probably about an hour and a half from Amrit. And then I'm spending probably overall on sales, including everything, probably around six hours a day, including sales calls, the marketing stuff, follow-ups and everything included. And just to compare that to before, I think I was probably spending around 15 minutes a day actually on the sales side beforehand and Amrit wouldn't have been spending anything. So yeah, you completely shifted our like mindset on what to spend time on. That was like a big thing. And then the cool part is it's like, okay, obviously going from 15 minutes to like six hours a day on marketing and sales, it's a huge jump, right? But when you think about it, it's like the people working at McDonald's or Walmart, like they're working like eight hours a day. So they're kind of working harder than most people, right? So that simple switch from like 15 minutes to six hours, you know, you're still like two hours off from most people. No, I'm joking, but that's good. <laughs> like that small change plus like, implementing the right outreach mechanisms that just took you guys straight towards closer to 30k a month so that's awesome how would your guys's like systems and processes change since you joined the program like hey before was it like maybe chris would do something and then amrit you guys were just texting no project management system and then now is it super organized what does that look like amrit you can you can tell us it was a mess before being completely honest we were both doing delivery we were both doing the same delivery at the same time so me like for example me and chris were both ideating we were both looking at scripts and like looking at thumbnails and things like that and the edits and things like that but now we time box at everything we do so we'll just make sure we only set a set amount of time um to make sure that we can get just be as efficient as possible we haven't seen any drop in quality in fact we've probably seen quality improve because we're spending more time in like the right places that more high quality time now than we did before that's awesome and i know before you guys joined you were doing no editing it was scripts ideas thumbnails and like maybe posting as well now we incorporated editing and when we had like that first sales call i guess you guys were like kind of hesitant on that now would you guys say that was the right decision? And then also what change has that made for the business? Are you guys able to charge more? Are clients more happy? Well, I think that is potentially like the biggest benefit we've got of coming into this program specifically was your guidance on the editor side. So the editor side has improved us for a, a number of reasons. The big thing is just sounds kind of weird, but the client's level of dependence on you kind of goes up a lot when you're like full package for them. So that just improves retention and stuff like that. And then of course it allows us to charge more. And then the other big thing that it allowed us to do is start looking at off-platform people as well because obviously off-platform people need and there's a lot more and we weren't able to look at them when we weren't doing the editing so overall yeah obviously a massive positive and yeah it was a big help having you on that side as well cool and i think one cool thing to touch on as well is that both of you guys don't even know how to edit but you hired video editors they're doing work for you how was that been because obviously you know it's a pretty big change Amrit, maybe you want to touch on it like was it difficult because you didn't know how to edit or was it like pretty chill i think because we know the styles and we see this type of delivery we want from an edit it's just about finding the right editors and finding the right quality and when you've got that you can just give them the, the point is to make sure it hits the right points and you get the right final product because everyone every editor will make the same mistakes in terms of like spelling mistakes or like sometimes the transitions are a little patchy but if you know where to catch those and you know about sound just from doing a few edits looking at a few edits you learn quite quickly anyway so it, it hasn't been too much of a 
a jump or harder for us. Yeah, that's definitely one huge realization most people haven't made is you don't even need to know how to edit to run a content agency because most of like the power of our service, I guess, comes from the ideas, the scripts, the copywriting, the thumbnail, the packaging. And then the editing is obviously important, but it's like icing on the cake at the end of the day. And then, yeah, Chris, you're completely right about the client depends more on you because if they have their own editor, maybe they're going to be like, oh, I can come up with the ideas themselves. And then obviously if they do it, like the videos just completely do terrible, um, which is always funny whenever a client leaves. But yeah, cool. With you guys insane growth so far, like what goals do you have or more so where do you see the business reaching by the end of 2024? I can take this one. So I know we had the goal in one month's time when we first joined to hit 40K and it obviously looks like we're actually going to hit that goal. Then our goal is around 70 to 100K now, end of year. We're trying really hard to not slow down on outreach and take your advice and like just keep going, keep hammering it. And we're managing just about to keep up. So yeah, 70 to 100K end of year. That's awesome. Yeah, one thing about you guys is like, you guys really take everything I say to heart where it's like, hey, do this much outreach per day or, you know, don't stop your outreach even though if there's like clients coming in. You guys continue to do that, which is awesome because that's what's going to take you to 70 to 100K. Most people, they add 10K MRR and then they're like, oh, we have to pause and focus on operations and then they just ruin the whole thing. So that's awesome. Love to see it. On the retention side, like I know you guys have great retention. I want to make sure this video is also valuable for any other content agency owners watching this. Do you have any tricks for like retaining clients, making sure they're happy, so on and so forth? Amrit, you can touch on that. It feels like the most important part of anything we do is the first four weeks. Like if you can deliver as much value, the strongest four weeks, put more time in than you might over six months or 12 months into that first four weeks. Clients really hang on to first impressions. So if you smash those four weeks, it's a lot. Build those good first impressions and they'll, they're more likely to trust you with months two and three and four, etc. So first four weeks, communicating as much as possible with clients as well. So just making sure you are like, speaking to them on any queries they have like as soon as possible. And then also just hearing about their ideas and thoughts as well. Might not always be the best ideas, but it's just handling them, making sure they feel heard. It's just like, it's a really easy way to gain their trust. Yeah, clients always, you know, once every two months or something, though, for me at least, they'll be like, hey, you know what? I've got this video idea, should we make it? And obviously, you know, sometimes they have good ideas and sometimes they don't have the best ideas, but then that's why they pay us, right? We got to tell them, hey, no, this isn't going to work because of this. We should maybe pivot it, do this instead. What was the most valuable part of the coaching program? Like, was it like being able to text me, have access? Do you think it was like coaching calls, the onboarding call, or what do you overall think? Definitely initially at the start, and I know I've spoken to you about this before, we were like crazy confused by how quickly you replied to us on Slack. <laughs> that was like the big thing. Because one of our biggest objections before we actually signed was like, okay, Eamon says we have access to him by Slack, but like, does he reply once a day? Does he reply like once every two days? Like, how does it actually work? But how ridiculously quick you reply on Slack and basically solve all the problems, whether it's with a voice note or like even a Loom video, that's probably the most valuable for me personally. And then objectively is the outreach methods because that's obviously what's made us scale. So they would be my two things. That's awesome. Okay, I got another question on your offer. Obviously, without revealing who you guys are targeting, are you guys promising an end result to these clients? Do you have a guarantee? Do you guys want to walk us through that? On the offer side, we've kind of taken your advice in the sense of we have an offer, we have a guarantee, and it works well. Our niche really likes it. But then at the same time, we do factor in kind of like the quality of the client. And it's allowed us a lot of time on the spot to actually, okay, if this client doesn't satisfy our requirements for this particular guarantee, we'll sometimes mend it and change it. And like it's allowed us to have like much more flexible guarantees. So yeah, overall, we do offer a guarantee, but we actually now change it depending on what client we're speaking to and what the actual results we can get them are. Yeah, that's perfect. Exactly what you should be doing. Awesome. Let's say someone's on the fence of joining the coaching program. Like what would you tell them? I'd say if Eamon says to do something, you should do it. I hope that would be my first piece of advice. I think the most important thing is like there, no business is perfect and there are different parts. Whatever your weakness is in the business, there is a solution and, and Eamon scaling to the size he scaled to means he's probably come across that problem and he probably does have a solution. And we haven't had a problem yet, which we haven't been able to ask Eamon about that he hasn't been able to give an answer for. So if you have a problem or a weakness in your business, ask Eamon about it and I'm sure the group is the best solution for that to help with. Awesome. Appreciate that. And then how about you, Chris? You got anything? If someone's on the fence about joining the program, what would you tell them? Let me put it like this. So when I joined back in the day, like four months ago, it was quite early at the start. And the reason why we jumped in is because there was no one out there specifically teaching like scaling a content agency. And there's obviously other acquisition companies out there, but none of them that specifically helped in this niche. And now it's even further along because obviously we kind of jumped in because we like believed you, we backed you, we knew you were going to scale and help us. But now because we're actually in the program, we've also seen the 
the results that people like us have got. And there's no one out there now that actually has a content agency scaling program that is getting people from eight to 29K or 30 plus with one-offs in four months. So that's what I'd say. There's no one out there with the, the testimonials. Awesome. Thanks guys. That means a lot to me. Dope. Well, I guess we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Hopefully you guys got some value out of this. And I'm going to leave Amrit and Chris's social media links in the description. So if you want to message them or follow them, follow along on their journey to 70 to 100K by end of year, that'd be dope. And if you guys want to join the content agency accelerator, it's going to be the first link in the description. All right, that's it. Peace out.